Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe, now we by Disney, or Colonel Lucasfilm, whichever way you slice it, Legends. Today I have for you, Jedi Twilight by John Astrander, also uh, Infinity's End. Uh, Jedi Twilight is Star Wars issues 19 to 22, which would later be redubbed, of course, Republic when we got to the Clone Wars, and Infinity's End by somebody else that's not John Ostrander, uh, and this is issues 23 to 26, and then a one-off comic, also within the, the Star Wars later redubbed Republic series, 27 Star Crash. Uh, I don't really have too much to say, spoiler-wise. Um, really, there's nothing in here that's really a spoiler. Uh, I mean, I'll save the only thing I have to say, I guess, for the very end. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but let me just talk about non-spoiler stuff. So, with Jedi Twilight by John Ostrander, we have this wonderful memory loss framing device. Because at, at the very, like, near the end of at the Emissaries uh, of Malastair... Uh, that issue, uh, we get a Mace Windu kind of centered ending, and he sees Quinlan Voss for a second. The beginning of this story starts with Quinlan not remembering who he is, not knowing what he's doing in this burning building, you know? So, like, the character gets to learn stuff while we get to learn stuff as well, and I thought that was really cool. Also, knowing that this is George Lucas's favorite EU character is really interesting because, as you'll see, when we get to the Clone Wars era, when Order 66 happens, he would not let this character die. He went to the people who wrote these comics and he said, no, you're not going to kill him off like you kill most of the Jedi. He's going to get away because George Lucas loved this character so much, he did not want him to die. And George never cared about the EU. Um, just so you know, if you enjoy TCW, nothing wrong with that. I'm very 50-50 with TCW. Quillen Voss, if you've watched that, if you watched the episode with him, that is not the Quillen Voss you get here. Quillen Voss in here is an entirely different character, and he's all for the better. He's a very serious character, at least so far, but you get contrasted with this Vili character. Vili, we've seen in a couple Star Wars tales. He's also been in some other stories in some small capacity, like the Inchuri Crisis and Acts of War. Vili is a phenomenally fun more on the evil side of characters, but, like, he's Han Solo in the sense where he just wants to get paid, but there's not really a heart of gold in there. He's he's very much in it for the money, but if if being the money means helping you out, that's what he'll do. But Villy's, Villy's a very fun character. Th those four issues, Jedi Twilight, was awesome. We get introduced to uh, Ayla Sakura as well, who is Quinlan Voss's apprentice. Um, and overall, that four-issue series was absolutely fantastic, and the art is mwah, mwah, mwah. It's by Jan Derisma, so of course it's gonna be beautiful, as always. Um, and yeah, I have only one thing to say, really, about the end, which I just thought was really cool. And this will be a defining trait for Quillen Voss, but I'll, I'll, I'll save that for the one spoiler I have. Um, and after that, we get to Infinity's End, which is... Continuing off of the last one, though not exactly, like, the main storyline of the last one isn't getting continued. It's kind of a one-off mission that Quillen Voss goes on. But at the end of it, Quillen Voss goes to retrain with the Jedi since he's lost his memory. Um, and this is seemingly one of the first missions they're putting him on, trusting him to. So we can assume that some time has passed. He's better into the swing of things. He goes to Dothmir to do a mission. Uh, we also see some ancient beings that I think might have been in, like, Dawn of the Jedi comics. I don't know if they would have been in maybe one of the Tales comics. I don't remember. Um, but, but that was really cool. Um, I, I hate, I hate the art. I don't think it looks very nice in this four issues, but whatever. Um, again, to the overall grand story of Quinlan, it doesn't really help anything. But if you like Quinlan like I do because of Twilight, so far at least I like Quinlan. It was a fun little four-issue thing. We also don't get to see too much of Dothmiri witches. We have a couple novels with them. One very focused around them in the courtship of Princess Leia. Some stuff later on, you know, the Clone Wars with the, the Dothmiri witches. But we don't really get too much with them. So it was cool to see them here. Other than that, it's nothing super consequential to Quillen Voss's plot. In fact, if you skipped out on this story entirely, I mean, I, I haven't read the rest of it. 
I imagine this isn't going to be too much like, oh my gosh, I'm missing something super duper important as you move forward. So, but it was a fun little story. And then we get to Star Wars uh, issue 27, Star Crash. This is a one-off Jedi with a one-off story that's not really that interesting. And that's all I have to say. I mean, without spoiling stuff. Like, if you want to read it, you can read it. Just know this character is a one-off. And you will never, ever, ever, ever see this character again. Now, unlike Nomad, which I enjoyed, for some reason I did not enjoy this. I just found it rather boring, rather tedious, and nothing new was really brought to the table. So it just was not my cup of tea. But that's basically it. This one was very short. Uh, it was just a bunch of comics. That's what a lot of the between episode one and two era is is comics you have about three adult novels i think and then a young adult series and that's pretty much it but a lot of it is comics so it goes by much quicker than the before episode one era did but i hope you all continue to join me up next we have the hunt for aura Singh. i know that got cut off a bit abruptly all i said was that i'm going to be uh reading the hunt for aura Singh next um, but I almost forgot to mention spoilers. I was about to end the video. So for those of you who don't want spoilers, you pretty much got all my thoughts. Uh, so you can go ahead and leave. This is pretty much the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I love all of you. Uh, but for those of you who have read this stuff, I only have one thing to really say. Okay? Final warning. Okay? Spoiler. Um, so at the end of it, he finally finds, um, Ayla Sakura. She doesn't remember who she is. He gets very mad at her uncle. Um, and starts electrocuting him, um, and, 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 and is fully intent on killing him, and, you know, this is, uh, you know, I don't, I haven't read the future stories, but I do know that this is going to be a defining trait for Quinlan, he is going to struggle, and struggle, and struggle with the dark side of the force, um, but he does not succeed, because Ayla, while not remembering who she is, gets really upset, and force pushes the both of them, However, she pushes her uncle over the side of a building, and he falls to his death. And she, of course, runs away in shock. And so it was a very, it was a very impactful ending. Um, and I only mention this because it was the only thing really of note that I had to say. Um, because Quinlan, uh, it, that's gonna, is that's his defining trait, and it just sets up a wonderful like, what's gonna go on from here with Ayla Sakura? Because obviously she becomes a Jedi. We see her in episode three, but you know, she's struggling with stuff right now. So what's going to happen with that? How's that going to be reconciled? All that's really interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing that is basically it. I just wanted to remember to actually mention that. So for those veterans, thank you for sticking around for an extra minute, but thank you all so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, sharing helps it a ton and I'll see you in the next one. May the force be with you.